Peter and Harry get yet another suit upgrade from Otto Octavius to free them from Iron Lad's snooping. Meanwhile, the first member of the Ultimate Sinister Six launches an attack. Is this the best issue yet? Let's find out in our review of Ultimate Spider-Man number 9 from Marvel Comics. See you in 3. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Ultimate Spider-Man number 9. Well, uh, okay, sure. Ultimate Spider-Man number 9 is a step up from the water treading plaguing this series of late. Writer Jonathan Hickman puts the focus back on plot development, sort of. You get some superhero action, which is good, and maybe a nugget or two of foreshadowing for a generally solid, but still leisurely paced issue. Before we dive in, let's recap what happened to Peter Parker in Ultimate Spider-Man number 8, which is the previous issue. He helped set up a birthday party for his kids. That's it. Meanwhile, the Kingpin assembled the ultimate version of the Sinister Six to try and take back control of the city from the emergence of more superheroes. So that brings us to the current issue, which is Ultimate Spider-Man number 9. We begin with Ben Parker and J. Jonah Jameson drinking their troubles away at a local bar. Why are they down? Well, believe it or not, their new publication is only popular and becoming increasingly more popular due to their reports of the mysterious figure known as Spider-Man. So they believe their attempts at starting a new newspaper that has meaning and depth and importance has quickly devolved into tabloid sensationalism. When MJ arrives, because she's helping with the marketing and the strategizing of what's going on with this new paper, she sets them straight with a lesson about how marketing actually works, and they wind up feeling much better. Jonathan Hickman opening this issue with this scene has several interesting tidbits, but there's a lot of oddity going on. Why would a pair of senior seasoned news professionals not understand how marketing and reader analytics work? Tracking numbers is the air publishers breathe if they want to be successful. So why would MJ need to show up to tell them how things work and to show them the ropes about marketing and reader engagement? Further, it's highly ironic that Marvel has a comic showing how important it is to build and bolster reader engagement in an era where Marvel's engagement with its readership is probably the lowest it is in history. Lastly, MJ's eyes through the entire sequence are strangely golden yellow, which could be an artifact of the digital copy we read, or maybe there's something else going on. I'm not sure. So the scene kind of plays out okay, but when you think about what's going on, who's talking to who and what, it strangely doesn't make any sense. Elsewhere, Peter and Harry return to Oscorp after making their crime-fighting rounds to find Otto Octavius bearing gifts. Otto cracked the code to prevent Tony Stark from remotely taking control of their suits. For Harry, the goblin suit is an easy fix. They just have to change the frequency with a little code modification. For Peter, it's not so easy. Otto's solution is the presentation of a new suit that looks surprisingly similar to the Earth 616 version of the Iron Spider suit. Peter, after a little conversation with his AI, declines due to the clunkiness of the design. Urged by Harry to come up with a simpler approach, Otto creates a more traditional suit made of fabric that doesn't have the symbiote-like Picotech or Picotech capabilities. Then the two friends go off to fight more crime with their new suits in, in order. Look, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer here. Fun and games with Otto to upgrade the suits are all well and good. But this is the third time in the series we're only on issue 9 that we've gone through a similar kind of scene. And it's starting to get repetitive. Admittedly, the scene is engaging because Peter discusses the options with his AI, which is in now in his own voice, and that has some humorous uh, elements to it because Peter now looks like he's having a serious conversation with himself. Still, more repetition, while leading to change, feels like a lot of filler. Hickman's got to come up with some more creative ideas to kind of get things moving. After their upgrades, we catch up with Peter and Harry a little bit later as they're discussing family plans for Christmas time on an apartment building rooftop. Suddenly, Peter feels a tingle, a, a kind of a first for him, or at least he might have been feeling them recently, but this is the first time we've seen it in action. And it prompts him to twitch in the right direction, narrowly missing a taser shot from nearby. The shot hits Harry, temporarily incapacitating his suit. Peter turns and confronts the first member of the Ultimate Sinister Six to find them and launch an attack. In this case, it is Black Cat Sr. The issue concludes with a hard-won victory after a very hard fight. A long walk off a short roof, you can kind of read between the lines on that one, and a tough talk about how far a hero has to go to stop the bad guys in the Ultimate Universe. There's some 
bibs and bobs in between some of the scenes, but that's pretty much the bulk of it. So let's talk about the positives and negatives, starting with what's great about Ultimate Spider-Man number nine. I've been especially hard on Hickman for his too slow pacing in the series, but this issue is better and it gives readers a little bit of action to boot, which has been missing, kind of. It's not a massive improvement, but Hickman's script here is good enough to hold interest for these characters and whatever is coming next. It's not great, but it's better. So let's talk about the negatives and what is not great about Ultimate Spider-Man number nine. The pacing is better, but it is not great. The amount of plot development and the pace with which it's unfolding is too leisurely to grab your attention. The idea is to keep readers hanging on from month to month. If everything is just taking the equivalent of a leisurely pace in the park, a slow stroll, if you will, that's not enough to grab people's attention. Hickman's got to pick up the pace. On a secondary note, there's an oddity that's starting to crop up in Hickman's writing, specifically with respect to Peter's personality. Black Cat's attack in this issue should be a big deal but Peter barely reacts to Black Cat's attack with anything more than what he needs to do at the moment to win the fight and then move on. When the fight is done, Harry and Peter stroll off as though it's just another day at the office. Why isn't Peter more fearful for the life of his family now that he knows he's being hunted? Hickman isn't writing Peter like he's a husband and a father who cares about the welfare of those around him, which is a strange miss. A father with young children and a wife that he loves should be really, really concerned that he's being hunted by one or more super criminals, for lack of a better term. And he's not reacting to that at all. He's just being very cavalier and casual about it. It could be an interpretation that Hickman is setting Peter up for an Uncle Ben moment to force him to recognize how serious the situation is. But he shouldn't need that in this case. He's a father that sort of comes with the territory and it just seems like a really off way to present his personality and character. All right, let's switch gears and talk about the art for a second. Marco Cicchetto is a master at mixing grounded character models and construction with amazing facial acting and expression and equally amazing action. Marvel couldn't have picked a better artist for the series. He's blowing it out of the park, which is fantastic. But at the same time, it's kind of a shame to see Cicchetto's talents not given a chance to shine and flex with these pokey, lackadaisical scripts. Final thoughts, what do you think about Ultimate Spider-Man number nine? It's a generally solid issue that gives Peter suit an upgrade ag again for the third or fourth time at this point, gives J. Jonah and Ben a marketing lesson on running a newspaper, which is really bizarre, and pits Harry and Peter against the first member of the Ultimate Sinister Six to join the hunt. Overall, Jonathan Hickman's pacing picks up a bit, which is an improvement, and the developments here range from interesting to mildly amusing, I'll put it that way. But the pacing is just much too slow to hold interest for anyone but hardcore Spider-Man fans. And Peter's lack of concern for himself and his family's safety is a really strange head-scratcher. Therefore, Ultimate Spider-Man number 9 earns a 6.8 out of 10. What Hickman and Cicchetto are delivering is really well done, but it's too little and too slow to get readers hooked. But what do you think? Am I completely off base on this series? That could be the case, and I'll, I'll own that. Leave a thumbs up if you appreciate this review, and drop a comment below telling me if you agree or disagree with the pace of this series. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review and buy this comic to help support the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very much, and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.